Hello and welcome back. Today we will discuss lecture 3-1 on reactive control. Recall that reactive control is a tight coupling of sensing and acting with no world model. The objectives of today's lecture are to describe the reactive control examples including schema theory, subsumption architecture, and the potential fields method. Reactive control is referred to as don't think, react. Reactive control is one of the most commonly used methods for robot control and it is based on a tight connection between the robot sensors and effectors. They do not use any internal representations and do not look ahead at the possible outcome of their actions. They operate on a short time scale and react to the current sensory information. They have reactive rules or reflexes to specific sensory input. A complex computation is removed entirely in favor of fast, stored, pre-computed responses. Reactive control is more similar to biological systems, which are vertical. Stimuli and responses. The robot system has a set of situations, stimuli or coordinations, and a set of actions, responses, actions, or behaviors. The situations may be based on sensory inputs or an internal state. Examples are obstacle avoidance or random wander or wall following. To keep a reactive system simple, you have one unique behavior for each stimuli. The conditions are mutually exclusive. As the sensor state space grows, the space may become unwieldy or intractable. Coming up with the complete set of rules for the state space is typically done at design time, not run time. Typically, there are only rules for important events and a default response for all others. Stuck situations. A reactive controller may get stuck if there is a default rule that covers some of the states. In wall following, this may be resolved by the following. Introduce randomness to get the robot unstuck from a corner by having it turned by a random angle instead of a fixed one. Or keep a history and remember the direction the robot turned last and use that information to make the decision about the next turn direction. And finally, have a timer that times the state and if the robot has been in the state for too long, it should jump out of it to a different state. Schema theory. Michael Arbib created schema theory around 1981. Arbib deduced that the brain's operating principles can be used to create learning machines. Arbib's advisor was Norbert Weiner, the founder of cybernetics. Schema is used to express the basic unit of activity. A schema consists of both the knowledge of how to act and or perceive, as well as the computational process by which it uses it to accomplish the activity. A schema class in C would contain both data and methods, and it would represent a behavior, as we've shown here, that would have a perceptual schema and a motor schema. Model of sensing. The perceptual schema embodies the sensing. Ron Arkin created schema-based navigation around 1989. Motor schema serve as the basic unit of behavior specification for the navigation of a mobile robot. There are multiple concurrent processes that operate in conjunction with associated perceptual schemas and contribute independently to the overall concerted action of the vehicle. So here in our model, we have the environment and we have the sensor which gives us an, our observation or image. And from that, we have a percept, which gives us our perceptual schema, which creates the motor schema, which has the motor action in it. So our schema has the knowledge of how to act as well as the computational power for acting. Sensing in a reactive paradigm. Here's an example of how schema theory would look in a reactive paradigm. The combination of the sensors have a specific signature or perceptual schema and the perceptual schema releases the motor schema for a robot navigation. So we have three different behaviors here, and they could be obstacle avoidance, wall following, and object retrieval, etc. And they work in parallel, but each perceptual schema triggers a unique motor schema. Those will combine together to create some type of emergent behavior. Action selection. There are several ways to combine the parallel reactive rules, and two examples are here. One of them is a multiplexer or arbitration. It's used to either create a hierarchy or a time sequence for producing different rules. The other option is fusion or summation, and this is a standard for combining multiple rules. This type of action selection affords emergent behavior.